Hello and welcome to another episode of Cake Fight Presents The Making of Kaleidoscope. I'm writer, director, producer Paige Feldman. And this week, as every week, I'm taking you inside my process of making my debut feature film. We're going from idea to premiere in real time. So last week, I talked all about writer's block and how it's like Russian nesting dolls. Because sometimes in order to solve it, you have to figure out the answers about character that are contained within questions about theme and also seem to stem from a question about plot. And in order to do that, you kind of have to turn yourself into a Russian nesting doll too, uncovering your own, or in my case, my own insecurities and fears and reasons that I went to law school. <laughs> So it was really exciting to get those revelations down and to um, unlock a lot of things about my outline just from thinking more deeply about myself and my own experiences. But what we have in store for you this week is way more exciting. Not only did I guess get a new haircut, also do you remember in August when I said this? Writing the script, that's where the first deadline's gonna be. I can draft really quickly, like I said, 10 pages a day and for a 120 page script be roughly two weeks to do that. I think, because I'm starting to pre-write for Kaleidoscope now, I think that having a draft of the script, first draft, no rewriting, just the draft, a realistic goal for that would be December 31st, 2021. Well, it's almost a palindrome. I mean, I know, like, it was, anyway. Uh, by 123121, I'm gonna have my rough draft. Well, by my count, today is December 15th, 2021. So we have just over two weeks until I have promised myself and all of you a first draft of Kaleidoscope. So I'm gonna roll the credits and when we get back, I'm going to tell you all about a work I've done this past week to make sure my outline is ready to roll for drafting and uh, tell you about how I'm gonna share the process with all of you as I get to work starting tomorrow. that I've had to face this week and all the writing that I've been doing hasn't been all that interesting. It's been a lot of typing and working on pen and paper on my outline and going back to typing and going back to pen and paper and not having cute hair like I do now. So sorry that this video footage is not as good as what you're seeing live and in person. I gave my hairdresser a picture of Meg Ryan. I'm very happy with the outcome. <laughs> Anyway, so what I have been doing with all of this writing is implementing the new backstory that I found for Lee last week about her giving up a, an internship or job opportunity as a photographer after Devin got in his accident and sticking in a relationship that's not working for her and feeling kind of resentful and resigned to a life doing something she doesn't love. And then there are all of the notes that my writing group gave me that were not the big game changer what's at stake for Lee. I'm gonna read from my phone because I have a list of them. That the first act needs a bigger climax. So initially my first act ended with Lee waking up and thinking that the whole time loop was just a dream. Now it's ending where she and Jonah realize they're in the time loop together. The second thing that I'm doing is making sure that the seven romantic comedy beats from this lovely book, Writing the Romantic Comedy by Billy Murnett, that I talked about in my video all about my uh, structuring and outline process, which I'll pop a link up to. This is just making sure that I have everything I need for my genre. And this isn't even a note that I got from my writing group. It's something that I felt like I wanted to do because so many of the notes from my writing group were about 
hey, are you sure that this should happen in Act 2 and this shouldn't happen in Act 3? Things like Act 2B, what I have labeled as currently, feels more like an Act 2A, having fun with the world, the new world you're experiencing. So I wanted to make sure that at least my romantic comedy beats are solid, even if there are some plot things that are a little bit hinky, <laughs> I guess. And then another, are you sure this thing should be happening in this act note that I have to go into is what really breaks Lee and Jonah up in act three? What's, where does their conflict come? There is a fight that they have in the real world, but my writing group was saying this doesn't quite feel like enough right here. It feels like there should be something else that happens to spur this argument, maybe a mini fight. So I'm, I'm looking into that. And then finally, here's a question that I think that I've been avoiding because of budgetary issues, which is what are Lee and Jonah doing in the real world? Outside of the time loop, as it's happening, they have a parallel forward moving life that they have to deal with. And uh, some, my writing group said it would be great to see some parallelisms between things that are happening in real life versus the way that Lee and Jonah are behaving in the time loop and really thinking about those two things on the same track. So I say I haven't thought about it because of budget issues because the more scenes that take place outside of the time loop in a different set, the more money I have to spend on different sets. But I need to I need to take my producer hat off for a minute and really just write the script that's going to work the best for me as a writer, as a storyteller. And then once I have this draft, I can go back to it and rewrite with that producer hat well on. <laughs> so all of that I've taken into consideration. I have made notes on my outline. But guys, it is it's ready. It's not perfect and it's not everything I want it to be and I'm not going to answer all of the questions I have before I start writing if I want to make this 12 31 21 deadline which I do this outline is ready for me to write a screenplay from it and what's more write a screenplay in two weeks from it so because I'm really confident about that first scene starting tomorrow Thursday December 16th I am going to start writing Kaleidoscope I actually have one more meeting with my writing group on Thursday to go over this outline again and make sure I'm not missing anything. My plan is to write about 10 pages a day, but I still have a day job and up until the 23rd, I will be going to that day job every day, every weekday. So I want to give myself a little bit of buffer and by the 31st, by New Year's Eve, before the bell tolls at midnight and we get into 2022, I will have a completed screenplay. And because this is such an exciting time in the creation of a film, the turning of an idea into an actual script, I have decided to document the whole process for you guys here on YouTube in more real time than I have before. So every day while I'm writing this script, I will be posting an update. I will have a video where I tell you how much I've written, what scene I've gotten to, any struggles or interesting things that have come up while I've been writing, and I'm also going to share with you my favorite thing that I've written that day. A piece of dialogue, a, an action line, a new character that maybe suddenly walked into our world. So if you are not subscribed yet, this is an excellent time to subscribe because I will be giving daily updates and showing you how I'm writing a screenplay in two weeks before the end of the year. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't. If you like this video or you like my haircut or you don't like my haircut, if you have feelings at all, please hit the like button. <laughs> and I will see you not next week, but tomorrow with an update on the first day of writing the screenplay for Kaleidoscope. I'm so freaking excited. I'll talk to you tomorrow.